First question is from Reward PT Movement Coach. Full range of motion during bodybuilding exercises, always or partial reps to keep tension on muscles for a bigger pump or both. Okay, so if, if we're going to do a head-to-head competition, because there's value in both and we'll explain why, but if we're going to do a head-to-head competition, full range of motion, generally speaking, is going to give you better results. You have a, a larger <laughs> range of strength that you gain because it's relatively specific to the range that you train in. So in other words, if I squat 12 inches, I'm going to get 12 inches of strength. If I only squat six inches, I'm mostly only going to get six inches of strength. So that's obviously valuable. Also, full range of motion tends to build more muscle generally because you're training the muscle uh, as the muscle fibers slide past each other and contract in larger ranges of motion. You just get more stimulus uh, when you do that. Now, he mentioned tension, keep tension. Here's a myth. You can keep tension in full range of motion just yes. like you can with partial not, range not of motion. Not only can you, you're supposed to. Yes. Yeah. So like like one, you know, people might say, oh, don't go all the way up for a shoulder press because if you do, then you lock out and you take off tension. No. If you go all the way up, you don't rest it on your joints. You have to keep tension the whole time. So as far as keeping tension is concerned, if you do it right, full range of motion keeps tension the whole time just like short ranges of motion do. Now, where does short range of motion have value? When I'm trying to specifically add strength to a range of motion that I'm challenged with. So yeah. let's say in my bench press, the top portion, the lockout is where I find I struggle. So I notice I'm really good until I get to lockout and then it's really, really hard. Well, if I do some sets of short range of motion bench press focusing just on lockout, then I'll improve that particular part of the range of motion. Well, you see power lifters uh, a lot of times like really focusing on that or doing like rack specific yes. pulls and things to address uh, if, if they're going to piece it out uh, in terms of like, uh, you know, different parts of the lift, they can then see where their weakness lies and let's like work just in that direction. But, uh, you know, in terms of bodybuilding, I mean, you see this all the time where they're trying to, they, they call it like what, like the squeeze the the peak yeah. of like of a bicep curl or something like that. Uh, I used to do this all the time. Um, I used to chase the pump. I used to do short reps. Uh, rarely ever do I do it anymore. The only time I do it, and I think uh, you recently, Sal, and I think it was your Instagram, you talked about this. It might have been on the show. Uh, you talked about how you like to use supersets when you f- are cutting. Mm-hmm. And to me, this is just like the whole 20-minute hit workouts, mm-hmm. si- similar type of concept here. Th- this way of training has value, has tremendous value, but you don't want to get stuck in training like this all the time. So then the next question is, okay, well, where do you implement this type of yeah. training? Well, you know, there's not this set rule of this is when best to do it, but this is how I prefer to use it. Since when I'm on a when I'm on a cut like you and I'm reducing calories, one of the first things that happens is I lose strength. It's just part of the process. Mm-hmm. You're eating way less food consistently. You're not going to be as strong as when you're fully fed. That's just a fact, right? And you're cutting, you're catabolic, so you're going down. So you're going to lose strength. So one of the best things mentally to do is to don't worry about how heavy the weight is. And so that's when I love to switch to lightweight, do these pumping type of reps just to send blood in there, get this workout, get this burn. And that's how I'll intermittently put them into my workouts is I don't feel strong today. So I might head into a workout thinking that I'm going to do full range of motion and strong lifts and go, oh my God, I am so weak today. But instead of getting so hung up on like, oh, I had to lift heavy and a certain way ah, today i'm gonna you know i'm getting a nice pump i'm not mm-hmm. i'm gonna lighten the load i'm just gonna pump some blood in there and so long as you are mostly training in full range of motion that's also not going to hurt you yes right if you're somebody who the people that are at most risk here are are, are the people that always train for the pump and shorten range of motion up that is not ideal you train long. your body to move that way that's right that, that is not an ideal way to train long term now if you train full range of motion 90% of the time, to me, it's great yeah. to do this every once in a while. And when I find- There's value in a new stimulus. That's right. But in terms of what the question's asking, I would have to go full range of motion oh, yeah. all day long. If you're going head to head and you had to pick one, I mean, yeah. there's no there's no comparison. But I mean, I'll give you an example for me. Like for a long time, I did this bodybuilding style overhead press where I stopped every rep Right about here, and right? you dropped it ninety degrees. Yes, and this. this was and, a sh- this was a, sh- a bodybuilder shoulder press. Yes, yeah. and the first time I figured out that a full range of motion worked was when I started to do real overhead presses and go all the way down to my upper chest, and I got more muscle growth. Still didn't do full lockout, and then I met Justin, 
and Justin talked all about overhead carries. Overhead carries are hard if you don't train it with that full range of motion. Yeah. And I noticed I was hella weak. I was like, whoa, man, holding something straight up above my head and keeping tension is hard for me. So I started doing overhead carries to make up for it. And again, I got just way more strength, stability, and I built a little bit of muscle. So this theory, this whole why it's in the bodybuilding community is the, the thought, the thought, because this is what I used to think too, is it's time under tension. And I used to think yeah. that I, you're losing that tension when you're at the end ranges of motion, right? right? And that's just not true. And so yes, to Justin's point, if we were to compare them head to head, full range of motion wins all day long. But I do think that there are, are places to play with the short pumping reps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It should just be, again, that's why I like to use the example of the 20 minute hit workout. You, I don't think there's a lot of value in training 20 minute hit a lot or all the time. I think that your body will get adapted to it. And most of those great benefits that all the studies talk about are in that short six week window. After that, it starts to diminish, mm -hmm. but there's still tremendous value in it. So use it when it makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. When you only got 20 minutes, great time to do a 20 minute hit workout. Or hey, when you're in a cut and you know you're going to be weaker, don't worry about doing the heavy full range motion. Maybe that's the day you do some pumping reps.